Boom Chinch, back at it, brother. How we doing, back man? Back at it. We're both been working out. Dude, We're to, let's go. Good. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I'm Hans. You're Franz. And we're going <laughs> to pump you, you up. up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's how you start a fun bag. Hey, real quick, super oh quick God. programming alert. You might be angry with us, thought we got lazy, thought we weren't doing anything. No, <laughs> we were working twice as hard for you, the fan at home, oh, Case, take oh him through God. how this week has gone. Well, Chinch, this is when we realize you and me aren't, aren't a TV station, that we're actually Very two true. dudes just putting stuff together. <laughs> Obviously, you're a high-end producer, one of the best in the business, but we don't have the cameras and the, the you know all that stuff. So anyway, I, I went down with Sarah this past week to, uh, I just figured, man, I was covering the Roberto Clemente day at City Field last week, and all the Roberto Clemente award winners came back. Curtis Granderson, Dave Stewart, Rick Sutcliffe, Tommy, Al Leiter, Pudge. I mean, the list of guys is incredible. And I thought, oh, my God, the 50th anniversary of Clemente's 3,000th hits coming up September 30th. And I'm like, you know what? The Clemente Museum is right downtown. My buddy Dwayne Reeder runs it. It's the most incredible place You'd ever seen it. The legacy of Clemente is in that place. It's an old engine house, fire uh, firehouse called Engine House 25. Side note of that, Lou Gehrig stayed there back in 1927 World Series, oh my God. which is even more incredible. He was friends with the fire chief who they played in the minor leagues together with. Anyway, I was like, you know what? I saw Dwayne when I was there at City Field, and I said, Dwayne, I said, I need to have you on the mayor's office podcast. He's like, let's do it. And I and then I just started to think, you and I started to talk. I was like, why don't I go down there and film yeah. the Clemente Museum and how freaking awesome it is and incredible. Yeah. And this is like the one show that I hope all our listeners, you know, if you listen on Spotify, you listen on Apple, take the time to go to YouTube mm -hmm. and check this out. Because... It's it's incredible. Chinch has been putting it together. We've been we've been you know it's been it's taken a lot to like download the files. We've had yeah, to get them to we, me. To, yeah, gigabytes, we, terabytes. Oh, there's man, a lot of bytes. We, we've we, you we've, know, we, listen, we've, we've had been had on the ass a lot. We, we've <laughs> we've learned a lot, dude. Failure is information. We got a lot of information yeah. from those past couple of days. But you know, I wouldn't have it any other way, man. We, we're getting better as far as that goes, and we can almost feel like we could take start taking uh, the mayor's office on the road yes. and, and do some more shows like this. So this is really going to be an unbelievable right. show. But Dwayne's stories about Clemente and Vera Clemente and, and, and Roberto Jr. and, oh. and Luis and, you know, the, all their, all, you know, the, the, the sons, um, it's incredible, dude. Right. Is it not incredible? It's incredible uh, no, the stories I, I, that he has. I, I, I got to say, first of all, like, I thought this was going to be great just conceptually anyway, but now, like, taking it into the edit, like, that's why – we would preach patience for one time on this one thing because it's like no this is like and by the way when you do watch it this is like this is high end broad like we shot this in yeah. 4k well, I shot it in 4k which <laughs> like it's like oh shit yeah. it's a kick at the files yeah. Down yeah. In 4K. Yeah. so we were scrambling chinch is spending all his hard-earned money to <laughs> download the yeah. new thing oh yeah oh yeah this like, cost us a couple swear, bucks chinch, this, chinch, this I, dude i swear to god i was this close to driving to you i'm like <laughs> dude why don't i just drive to jersey yeah. just six plug hours, it in freaking plug Long it out. in we'll download it it'll be you know <laughs> yeah no but anyway but oh man you said it there's there's a story about franco harris buying one of uh, Clemente suits in there the the bats oh. what people don't know I've never been there so I was getting I was learning as I was watching this oh my god there's a basement with a winery where like yeah Eddie Vedder's the been in there and the Oh yeah, dude. We, well, a few years ago, I, you know, when Ed came into town with Pearl Jam, 2013, bro, a while ago, I had Bill Mazeroski. I called Maz. I'm like, Maz, is there any chance you can come down, hang out with my buddy Ed Vetter? He's the lead singer of Pearl Jam. So Jeff Ament and Ed came down from Pearl Jam. Jason Grilly came over uh, along with um, Steve Blass. Steve Blass was there. Yeah, Blass was just telling stories, dude. Was oh, that's gonna be great. But I remember we're sitting there. Ed brings his like Maz helmet. And he's you know gets him to sign it, and he was like. And, you know, he pulls me aside. He's like, hey. So Ed Lee's room was like, hey, tell me what that guy's name is. Is his name Pearl what? His name is Pearl. I'm like, no. I'm like, oh, no way. His name's not. I'm like, I'm like, Maz, his name's not Pearl. The <laughs> band's name's Pearl Jam. And his name's Eddie Vedder. It was so great. To, that is so an all-time. Like, here, Ed. Ed comes in. It was like, you know. It was like just so funny because like Maz is a little older. It was just yeah. a good classic. But anyway, that story's yeah. in the show. It's an incredible, incredible episode. So let's yeah. go. All the mayor's office, all you guys that listen to us, thank you. Tune into this show. Go yeah, check it out do. on YouTube. It's incredible. Yeah. Shinch has spent a ton of time doing it, but you yeah. will not be disappointed. I think we blast. To watch I think we're thing. gonna blast this off Monday morning. We're, we yeah. got this show today, and I think Monday morning we're blasting this out. And like I said, it's it's TV quality at a level. 
as if yeah. you were watching ESPN, NFL Network, anything you're watching. Yeah. And it's a great time for it. Baseball's going great. And speaking of baseball, we were talking Cy Young, and I was, and we were like, how can we talk about Cy Young Award today? And I was like, oh, you know what? I wonder what the odds are, right? So I just right. uh, I found this nice thing. It's called Covers.com. I'll give him a little props. This guy, right. this was a, a couple days ago, so maybe it's changed, but I don't think. Close enough, right? Odds to win the AL Cy Young Award right now. Verlander, negative 370. Cease, plus 420. That is a huge distance. And then Valdez is plus 1,500. Clanahan, it goes down the road. For some reason, Shane Bieber's on there for plus 50,000. If he wins, you would oh, really? make a pretty decent <laughs> amount of money, but I don't think he's going to win. So let's no. start with AL. Give me your thoughts. Well, and then we'll I think if you look at the you look at the numbers right here with Verlander. He leads the AL. He'll always been hurt for the last month. Mm -hmm. He still leads the AL in wins, winning percentage, ERA plus, WHIP, hits per nine, and it has a one eight two ERA so far, mm -hmm. which is pretty incredible. Now Dylan Cease has a two one three ERA, but in the last what is it? In his last so many starts, his ERA is a joke. It's like one point mm -hmm. two five for yeah. Um, yeah, so he, so Dylan Cease is right there, you know, when you're talking about, you know, being, you know, being in this race, I just feel like Verlander's put up good enough numbers already. Yeah. You know, oh, here it is. If, if Cease keeps up his otherworldly run, 1.35 ERA over his past 21 starts, mm. he could apply pressure. But Verlander, I think probably is probably going to take this. Yeah. Here's, no here's a great it. stat I'm looking at right now that just proves how freakishly of a horse Verlander is like we're we're starting to get into like Nolan Ryan territory with him with age and delivery of stats and everything. This right. says Cease has made four more starts than Verlander. That's four full starts more, but he only has ten more innings pitched. That's how deep Verlander wow. goes into games. That's crazy. Wow. That's that's incredible. That's crazy. That that's could be up crazy, to like twenty eight. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. All right, let's go NL. This is interesting. Oh, this is a yeah. little tighter. Alcantara of the Marlins is negative 420. Urias yeah. is plus 650. Then it drops off to Freed at uh, plus 1500 and Gallon at plus 1500. Good, good year by Gallon, yeah. by the way. Give him credit, too. Yeah. He's not going to well, win Gallon's it, but had a, Gallon's awesome had a great year. year. Or, Urias, this could be his year, man. This it's guy, close. This guy's a. He's kind of the overlooked lefty in that rotation with the Dodgers, mm -hmm. overlooked pitcher at probably in the league. This guy's an absolute stud because it feels like he's been in the league for 20 years. I think he came up when he was 16. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, we've been talking I about him for years, right? Dude, I think he's only 24 still or something ridiculous. Yeah, something so, awesome like that. Kid's an absolute stud. And uh, yeah, you know, Alcan Al Alcantara is, is unbelievable. He's got unbelievable stuff, man. Yeah. couple uh, stats real you know, quick. He, Listen to this stat real quick on your ears. 10 and 1 with a 130 across 69 in innings in his last 11 starts hasn't allowed more than two earned runs in any of those outings in 11 starts. Yeah, it's incredible, dude. Yeah. He's really like gone to the next level. Yeah, and what were you saying about Alcantara? Yeah, well, he's had 212 innings pitch. I mean, this guy's a workhorse, dude. Mm -hmm. Never wants to come out of the game. He's been pretty dominant, 2370 ERA. So, that race will be fun, bro. That'll be fun. And the whole thing, and you know, just baseball in general. These races are these races are, you know, coming down to the yeah. wire. Um, you know, you you want you wonder if the uh, Phillies can hold on against the Brewers are coming. I think that's yeah. the one big one. Um, and then Baltimore is trying to get their way back in, but Seattle and Tampa, those guys are still winning, finding ways, yeah. you know, to kind of get it done. So you, you know what else too? This is a this is a very unique thing to baseball that you don't really get in the other sports because. Like, for example, if I'm a Marlins fan, even if they're, you know, struggling, doing well, whatever, like, the cool thing is, like, you. Can, I remember when the Yankees sucked when I was growing up, I just hung my yeah. hat on, like, all right, well, hopefully Donnie Baseball or, or Winfield's going to win the <laughs> yeah, MVP. Yeah. And, and it, it keeps you focused. It keeps you concentrating, like, especially starting pitching. Like, who was it? Uh, oh, for the Mets, R.A. Dickey. They sucked for, oh, yeah. for that year. But if you were a Mets fan, you watched every Sunday that he pitched because it was like, yeah, yeah you know what? At least I'm for rooting it. for our guy. So exactly. that's good. Rookie of the year is kind of similar in that. Yeah, it's cool. The races, who, who, are dude. Who, I know he. I know he said it this last week, but we should just really quick. Who do you think? I mean, Judge or Otani? I just gotta go, Judge. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I, I, I must admit, I must admit, a month ago I said Otani. Yeah. And seeing what Judge is doing, how far ahead he is of so many people, I just think. I think what has helped Judge. Judge's MVP candidacy 
is how awful the Yankees have been around him. And I know we say, like, and we had this whole conversation, like you said last week, about, like, well, the MVP should just be the best player in the league. But, like, there really is the, the extenuating circumstances plus the contract year. I don't know. See, like, if I were a voter, and voting is, like, first of all, any these guys who vote for this stuff, and we have very good friends who do it and who take it very seriously, some of them don't. But generally speaking, it is it does end up being a matter of opinion. Now, some of them do hardcore statistical analysis. Fine. That, right. But still, that's that's the way they're using their opinion. They want to use analytics for their opinion. But generally speaking, I, like, first of all, I wouldn't be mad if either guy wins. I really wouldn't. Like, right. it's like back when it was, there was the Trout-Miggy Cabrera debate when Miggy Cabrera won a triple crown. Won the triple crown, yeah. And did he win? He didn't win that year, right? Trout, yeah, Trout. he won it. He oh, won he it, did win but it. everyone said Trout's war Yeah, his better. statistics, Trout, whatever. All the new stats, yeah, were better. But, like, at yeah. the end of the day, the triple crown's a triple crown. I don't care what anybody says. Here's the which thing judge is, Which judge has a shot at, by the way? Oh, That's a incredible. whole other it's thing. It's incredible. Here's another thing I was thinking of yesterday when I was in the bathroom. That's where my mind really <laughs> yeah, works that's, good. Yeah, that's good thinking time. So, Dude, I was thinking, I was like this. You know, people were, so many people are like, oh, yeah, RBIs don't matter, right. but uh, on base percentage does, OPS does. And I'm like, I think of a guy like Pete Alonso, guys driving in 115 runs. Who, who, do you, who are you winning games with? The guys that are driving in runs or right. the guys that are getting on base, right? And a lot of people can get on base, but not everyone drives in runs. Like when, so when I look at them, I'm saying, oh, the, you know, these old stats. Batting average, home runs, right. RBIs don't matter. I'm like, BS. At the end of the day, like Jim Lean used to say, when they come up to me at the end of the game and they say, hey, what happened? Hey, we couldn't get the big hit. Exactly. We couldn't get the big hit. We couldn't drive in and right. no freaking runs than the other team. You need run producers. Exactly. You need guys driving runs and score runs. That stat is still matters it's still huge and you need guys like the right. Alonzo's and these guys that are just coming through big time exactly and uh, yeah exactly knowing that they're not getting pitched to and but again it goes right back to your point you, i'll use judge if judge goes o for o for four o for o with four walks which could very well start happening in the next like week or two right. big time like barry bonds treatment and the yankees right. lose two to one in a playoff race how much more valuable are those f four walks than if you went one for four with a three-run homer and they won three to two? End of story. There's your three RBIs. That's why RBIs matter. There's your, why on base doesn't matter. Like, it just, I mean, yes, it does. It does matter. But in this context, it pisses right, me Right, but off. not everyone has the heartbeat, too. Of of guys that can drive and runs, I just mm -hmm. can't say, say, oh, it's a it's a it's a team thing. When guys get on base, they just I go no, stop that stuff. Have you ever been in the box when it's a team thing and place is going crazy? Couple guys are on, it's a one run game, and not everyone handles that well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you like, tell the story about the being in a World driving, Series, yeah, and right. having to take deep breaths and and get your exactly. shit together. Not everybody trust, gets their shit together. And, and trust the process, there right? Trust the process, right? Oh, beautiful. I was just chance. I was just saying this. I'm I'm putting together. A, a, a mental performance coaching program nice. and um you know we, we, we just sent it out recently for a few kids in the area and we're gonna take it national at some point awesome. here probably in a couple months but you know what i was thinking was this so when people see the price tag they go ah, i don't know i don't know and i go okay you go down to your local batting average batting cage guy guys charging you 80 to 100 bucks right mm -hmm. for one hour right you go to you go to your strength coach he's charging you 80 to 100 bucks an At hour least. right okay so you're the strongest guy in the world you got the okay you go to the football coach you know he's going to teach you this technique this technique this boom you go to that you do all that stuff you pay that guy 100 bucks 150 200 you know blah 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 okay so you have the skills now oh man this guy's got good skills he can hit he can run he could throw you know, he, he's strong as an ox. He spends all this money. But guess what? Come game time, mm -hmm. if you've ever been in the box, that's why 95% of minor leaguers don't play a day in the big leagues. Yeah. Why do 95% of guys that can hit the ball 450 feet, right? They can throw uh, cannons everywhere. They got cannons. They four four o'clock hitters? Isn't that what you call them? Like four o'clock right. hitters? Yeah, five o'clock hitters. Five o'clock hitters. hitters. Right? Because at the end of the day, when you get in the batter's box or you get behind the, the center, when you got to make a play and, and, and the pressure and the crowd and all that stuff, and you, uh, or maybe you had a bad, uh, a bad bat before, you struck out. It's you in your head, dude. It's you in your mind. What tools do you have to slow the game down? What tools do you have to live in the moment? What tools do you have? What process have you made up for yourself to trust yourself? 
or do you get more geared up? Do you slow down, right? What What's going through your mind as far as perspective? What do you think about baseball or sports that makes you better than anybody else? Because at the end of the day, a lot of people have coaches in the cages. A lot of people have coaches in the, in the weight room. But if you want to be good in the game, you got to learn how to think right. And that's why I think like, and I'm not selling my program. I just know my program's legit because what yeah. it brings and what I've put together. It's changed your life. My point is, for anyone out there, for and, and even 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 if you're uh, if you're a businessman, if you're whatever you do in life, you got to have a process for your life. You got to have. I love this line right here too. Like, what habits and routines do you have? Like, um, you know, they, they were they were. They, there's there's a line that I love that says, um, "You don't create your future." You create your habits mm. and then your habits create your future, I right? Like so like, how do you create a habit? How do you create a new behavior? Like there's so many things to learn about how to be great mentally about, and, and like LeBron James says, you know, LeBron James says, Hey, it's one thing to master your game. It's another, it's you're, you're, you're a master. If you can master your mind, like, and these guys know how big it is. You know, LeBron says sells the call map and all that stuff, but I don't know why I'm on my soapbox right now. Cause I wasn't going to be, but no, I, I am love because it. When I when I'm when you release because you know why I'm, you know why it bothers me a little bit because we released the program and we got a couple we got a couple people to sign up but also a couple people say well you know that's a little bit too, you know a lot of money okay I know people have their hard earned money I get that but if you're looking to be great in life you have to train your mind every single day you have to find things that work for you energy management. You know, all that stuff. How well do you take care of your energy? Right. And my whole point is there's a gr lot of great coaches out there, too. The Brian Canes, the Brian Johnsons, you know, a lot of uh, the Brian Panuzos, uh, Michael DeSantis. There's so many good coaches out there. Mark Devine that help you with that. I'm just saying what I want to say is, hey, anyone who's an athlete or anyone who's in the working world, you have to work at your mind, how you think, how you move, how you eat, how you sleep. It all needs attention. I just think it's an awesome thing, bro. I'm fired up because yeah. I just think it's I just think it, it's something that gets overlooked. Let's not overlook it anymore. Let's go. Let's get after it. I love it. Time. First of all, wait, hold on. That was awesome. And when you say the soapbox, I think the second best thing other than what you just said is the fact that you made the decision to start standing for the show because I love it. I think that's probably... Dude, that, that, I think that's why you, me, you, you could just explore... You, <laughs> a couple, a couple. Hey, dude, yeah, really this. quick. When I'm doing this, I want to yeah. show you. Craig, when I, 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 when, I was, when I was done in 2009, I couldn't stand working out anymore. I'm like, I got to do something else. So Ooh, you did boxing? I started, I started boxing, bro. Oh, yeah. With, with, with Craig Wolfley, former Steeler, all-pro defensive tackle. Dude, Took on Butterbean, almost knocked out Butterbean back in the day. Legit, dude. Nice. So I go to Wolfie's place. I'm like, all right. He's like, all right, get your hands up, case. I'm like, all right, boom, boom. He's like, all right. And I'm boxing with Chich. He's like, and every time, so we're throwing a million punches. And like, oh dude, God. I don't know if you've ever thrown a million punches. Dude, yes, the breathing. First off, I'm first off, I'm gassed out of my mind. Second gassed. off, my hands are low. My hands are lowering. He's like, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Oh. Well, after he's got to know me after a couple weeks, whenever I drop my hands, this one day, he goes, bam. <laughs> he hits me in the. I'm, Dude, I was rattled. I'm literally like, oh. The guy went up and down. Totally rattled, dude. I'm like, Wolf, you can't hit me in the head. He's like, keep your hands up. I'm like, dude, I'm paying you to. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not paying you to I'm punch not, me in the face. My wife. I go, I'm not, the, I'm not the ring with you. I'm paying you to, to hold the bags up till I can punch them. You're not supposed to hit me in the head with. You, you, you almost beat Butterbean. <laughs> That's a crazy story. Dude, my first, I, the first time I ever tried boxing was uh, our guest, Boom Bill Mancini. My, my brother took me to yes. his gym, and he worked us through. And I was like, I'm an athlete. Boxing's easy. Within, like, yeah. literally... I would say, like, within, like, a minute 30 of the first, like, you know, hey, let's right. just get loose. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you have to change your entire, that's part of your breathing, mental breathing focus. So, like, dude, you have to, con to, when you have, I don't know how boxers go 12 rounds. That's absolutely yeah. bananas to me. But no, yeah, a, wow, no, great dude, story. I agree, dude. B boxing is not easy, man. It no, is my easy. one of my cousins does kickboxing. That's like double whammy. Your legs too. Bro, I mean, I could not. Like it would be like a double, <laughs> if I you kick, bro. It's like <laughs> you, ah, yeah. hamstring cramp. I can't right believe now. you got high, that high just now. All right, hey, you got. We got to get rolling soon. You like, got to get out of here. You got things right to here. do. Oh, right here. the crane. Boom. Yes, Machi. Oh, there you go. There, you you may have just hit a quad right there. I think. No, you I might think have. I just hurt myself. Seriously, I'm, trying <laughs> I, to play it off. I'm trying to play it off right now. I might I have no to. I might have to slow glute. slow mo your reaction. I got a glute strain. Glute, <laughs> glute strain right now. Okay. Well, but that's a problem because you got to go golfing tomorrow. Last topic. 
What's, oh, bro, what's I'm golf? going golf, golf, oh, golfing tomorrow morning. My buddy Jay Adams, uh, uh, David Ross, Rossi, mm -hmm. and then Dempster. Dempster, yes. we're doing it again. We're going out to this place called Longview, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to knock them around. I'm picking Rossi up in the morning. Hopefully, they're going to play in the Buccos tonight. Who knows? They're two terrible teams right now going at it, so <laughs> yeah. he'll, he'll be ready to get out on the I'm like, I'm picking you up at 7.30, so. Nice. He'll be ready to go. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that, bro. The okay. best round I ever played was with Dempster. He's like the... A I whisper. shot a 94. It was my best round ever. 94, baby. <laughs> broke 100. Nice. He was like such a good coach. I'm like, Deb, you're such a good... I should hire you. I should pay you for these lessons that you're giving. He's me. good, I mean, right? Incredible. He's like really good. Dude, he's incredible. He's what is he? Good. Is he's he a incredible. long guy or is he like a... Bro, he crushes his drives. Which, Does which he? He was such a horseshit. He was such a horseshit hitter in the batter's box. I'm like, <laughs> how are you crushing these drives? <laughs> Although I didn't. I played with Leland one time, too, who never made it out of double A as a player. And he had 16 <laughs> drives right down the middle. I'm like, you so got to be annoying. kidding me. He's, he's got a he, two heaters a hole. He's crushing drives. <laughs> I'm in. I'm righty, lefty. I'm hitting balls everywhere. So I'm looking forward to golfing with those guys tomorrow. We got our charity golf outing coming up for the Miracle League of the South Hills on Monday. So that's going to be fun, too. Right, so great. I got a lot, of, a lot of action, dude. Just went down to see my dad. He just started rehabbing. Yeah, let's so go. If any everyone out there, so keep please the keep prayers the prayers coming. coming. Really appreciate that yeah. so much. I, I believe in the power of prayer. I agree, and uh, and so does my dad. So it's uh, you know we're, let's we're go. pulling for him. And also, by the way, don't forget. I think we drop it Monday. Let's just say right now, Monday morning. Monday, Monday morning, you chance. guys are going to see. That's on you now. It's in your hands, Chance. It's on you now. Finally so in my it's hands. Monday morning, I blame you. Okay, you got it. It's all there. It's <laughs> it's there. Uh, literally, once we hang up on this, I'm going to fire off this show and everybody can listen to it. And I'm going to knock out the rest of the thing. And we're going to do a little personal viewing party tonight, maybe tomorrow, this weekend. Yes. We're both going to watch it. Yes. Tweak it even more. Very excited. Roberto Clemente Can't Museum. Wait, really great. All right, Case. Get after this weekend, everybody. Get after your weekends in case. What do we have to do? What do we do? We like. got to download, subscribe, and tell your friends. Let's go. Yes. Download, subscribe, tell your friends. Let's keep it rolling. Let's get it going. And we will see you guys next week. Please get to YouTube to watch this yes. show. Chinch works too hard for you not to YouTube it. Let's <laughs> yes. get it. Let's, let's get it. All right, bro. I love you, man. Love you, buddy. Have a great weekend. Everybody out there, let's go. Have a great weekend. I'll see you.